this will be? 25 minutes. Okay. I'm here to be an all-time great. Now rocking with the best. Purping yellow, purping yellow, purping yellow, purping yellow. The Lakers repeat back-to-back title. Welcome to the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast. Oh, he's smoking hot. The latest Laker news. Another great Showtime feed. The greatest Laker show. This is going to be legendary for a long time. This is the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast. Lakers all day. Go Lakers! What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Big Baby, here from Big Baby Sports. I got a very special guest today, Arash Markazi from Sports Tribune. Arash Markazi, man, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Come on, man. How's it going? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Man, man it's an honor, man. You inspire me to uh, do this podcasting stuff, man. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule, man. Of course. We've been meaning to do this for a while, so I'm really glad we finally connected. Yeah, most definitely, man. So tell us a little bit about your career, man. What did you become a sports analyst? Well, you know what? I was always a big sports fan, but, um, you know, my family is not very tall. They're not very athletic. And when I say that, my, my mom's, you know, four foot 11, dad's five foot one. So I, I knew I wasn't going to be full guard of the Lakers, but I did know that I loved uh, sports, loved the Lakers, grew up with the Showtime Lakers. Uh, so, you know, when I went to school, you know, Going back to grade school, but certainly high school uh, and then college, of course, I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a sports journalist. I wanted to cover these games and cover these teams. Yeah, most definitely, man. Um, Like, just in general, like this whole media stuff, like, tell people that want to start their journey in media, like, what kind of advice can you give them? Well, you know, the beauty of it is now, you know, that your podcast is a perfect example you know like when i was coming up 20 years ago you know you really had to kind of uh, try to get a job at a major uh, newspaper magazine tv network something along those lines it was really hard to do i think now in 2023 and as we progress um you know listen you could start your own podcast you can hop on Substack, you can get on a blog you can blow up on social tiktok whatnot so it's not that it's simple at the end of the day you still have to produce content you still have to do something where people are going to tune in but your ability to at least get your foot in the door and say hey man like i got a podcast i got a Substack, i got a blog i got a whatever you could do that tomorrow most definitely, man. But and also too, man, like just the podcasting game, man. It's a grind, but I love podcasting. I love the work. You know, I I I'd guest on my show like Dwight Howard, Ron Artest, Byron Scott. So it's you know my my podcast is out there, but I just want to you know be more recognized in the game. You know. Well, you know, but that's the beauty of it, you know, because you know you you send someone the link. And then you're a hustler, you're a grinder, and so you get good guests on. And I think that's what happens. You know, you, you, you get a couple of big guests. Hopefully they say something cool. Hopefully they say something that you can kind of promote on social. And then one thing leads to another. You know, I mean, these like small companies or startups or content creators, they all started somewhere, right? And then, and then to see them build their brand and build their company, that's really cool. Yeah, it is, man. I, I like people just podcasting, grinding, and you know, let's switch to uh, the LA Lakers, man. Um, they got to the West Conference Finals, man. What do you think they're going to do in free agency that starts at three o'clock today? What do you think they're going to do in free agency? You know, I really agree with their plan of keeping this core group together. You know, one thing that I said even before the postseason started, my thing was like, I don't really care how far they go because it was really incredible that at around the trade deadline they're the 13th seed they're below 500 that they have no chance and then the group that they put together gelled so quickly that they you know made it to the postseason and not only did they make it to the postseason they knocked off the number two seed Memphis Grizzlies they knocked off the, the, the defending champion Warriors they got to the Western Conference Finals I mean no one would have thought that so the one thing I said is, like, let's run this back. Like, like, like let's bring these guys together full off season, 
full training camp, preseason, full season, and see what they could do. And so I think that they will do that. Of course, you have to make some tweaks. You have to make some changes. I think that they will. But the core group, I would love to see them come back. Yeah, me too, man. The way that they, uh, Austin Reeves, Rui Chamor, D'Lo, just that group, the core group, man, I like their game, you know, and I feel like us giving the training camp together and get, just us getting chemistry, we're in the West Conference Finals. Like we, like you said, 13th seed came back. You know, we're eight wins away from an NBA championship, you know, but Denver was just better team overall, you know, and Darvin Ham is getting a lot of, like, hate for his rotations, you know what I mean? But that's the thing. He's still a good coach. You know, I give him an A-plus this year for the certain coaches would have folded under pressure yeah. at starting 2-10. and 10. Like, how do you feel like Darvin Ham's done with this, uh, this Laker team? I think he's done great, you know, and, and here's the thing. The coaching profession, especially in this league, especially in the NBA, is brutal. It's thankless. I mean, look at the guys who got fired. The 2019 NBA champion, uh, Nick Nurse, 2020 champion, Frank Vogel, 2021 champion, Mike Budenholzer. These are champions. I mean, these are like three straight championship coaches who get fired because – you know, maybe they had a bad postseason, they had a bad season, they, they, something went wrong. And so I think a lot of times it's so, like, easy to blame the coaches. I think Ham made the adjustments that he had to. I think he did a fantastic job. And you brought up a good point. I mean, here's the thing. I thought the Lakers were the second best team in the postseason. The Denver Nuggets not only won the championship, they had a historic run during the postseason, you know, top 10 in postseason history. So, you know, did they win the championship? No. In my view, were they the second best team? Yes. Like, if, if they found a way, some way, somehow to beat Denver, I think they, they there's no doubt in my mind, they would have beaten the um, Heat. So, you know, when you look at what you have to do, yes, you have to find a way to beat the Denver. It's not simple. The rest of the league is trying to figure out how to do that. But when I say they came close, and I know they got swept. But, like, every one of those games was tied at the end. In three of the four, they had the lead in the second half. They should have found a way to win a couple of those games. It doesn't make it any, like, easier that they lost. But um, they're not that far off. Yeah, most definitely, man. We're not far off, man. Like you said, we just – and this, we're up 16 at one point, 13, just gave up the lead. But I feel like if we would have executed down the stretch in games two, three, and four, I think we would have – probably beat Denver but just that's how it goes in the NBA man you're gonna have those games where you just can't make shots your defense ain't there it's part of the basketball man and it's unfortunate but I feel like the Lakers are gonna come back with the same team and all this like James Harden stuff that's going on Kyrie man where do you think Kyrie's gonna be at the end of I the day he goes back to the Mavericks I think that makes the most sense for him but you know I, I don't know exactly why he's talking to the Suns I think that's just to make headlines or whatever I mean I, I don't know how that deal would even work James Harden of course wants to get traded everyone's talking about him going to the Clippers I, I don't know how that big three would go I mean you know the biggest thing with the Clippers as we know is health I mean you, you could put the best team on paper but you know come postseason if Kawhi and or Paul George are like gone and it doesn't really um you know they, they, they need to stay healthy so um yeah so my guess is Harden ends up with the Clippers and I my guess is Kyrie ends up back in t -t 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 Dallas yeah most definitely man I feel like James Harden's gonna go with the Clippers makes sense for them because they Clippers gotta get a big three over there with Harden Kawhi Paul George plus West Westbrook might be back so they might have a little big four over there Kyrie, I feel like he's just using the Suns as the leverage. If he really wants that uh, five-year contract, just say, hey, I'm going to go to the, talk to the Lakers. And then Mark Cuban will probably be like, okay, I'll give you the five years. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know why, because the Suns don't have cap space. you know. But I feel like at the end of the day, he's going to go back to Dallas, get his money, yeah. and he'll finish out his career in Dallas. But it's unfortunate, man. I wish my Lakers would have got Kyrie, but it is what it is. But you know what? To be honest, I, I think it really worked out, because I was in the same boat with you that I wanted uh, – Kyrie, I think he would have been fantastic. I think, I mean, there's no doubt LeBron wanted Kyrie as well. I just love the moves that they made at the trade deadline. And I, and I got to give Rob Belinka his flowers because I was definitely critical of the moves he made of the previous couple of uh, seasons. Uh, just every move they made at the deadline worked. Rui Hachimura, D'Angelo Russell, Jared Vanderbilt, they all uh, fit. And so while I wanted Kyrie, I think the moves that they made helped them a ton. Yeah, me too, man. But that's the thing. I think if we would have got Kyrie, 
I think we would have probably beat Denver, but our depth would have been shortened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's like Rob Plinka's picking depth over super teams because super teams haven't been really working lately with the Lakers. So they're probably realizing, okay, we're going to do depth. We're going to go this way, this route. And I feel like, to be honest, man, I feel like LeBron's probably going to retire this next year. I feel like this is his last year to retire from the Lakers and go to somewhere with his son. What do you think about LeBron and uh, Bronny James teaming up in the NBA? Yeah, I mean, I think Bronny, I think with the fact that he's going to be at USC, LeBron's going to come back for one more year. And then I think, I think you're right. I think, I think this is sort of, you know, he, he wants to get, give it one more go, see if he can win a title. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I think he's pretty much set. I mean, pe- pe- people were surprised he was talking about retirement and i wasn't i mean i'm like listen 20 year career i mean how like how many guys play 21 22 23 years so i think he's got one more year and uh i I think it's their goal to put a team around him that can win yeah man i feel like he's gonna stay one more year and then go you know wait for his son and if his son goes to the line hawks he'll go there any team that picks Bronny, lebron's probably gonna be like a package deal so you know, and I'm okay with LeBron leaving the Lakers. You know, it's, it's like the Lakers are doing yeah. the moves for rebuilding and the, the young guys and just just the assets that we have is starting to turn the page, but it's okay. We're, I'm a Laker fan, you know. It's a part of the Lakers' journey. They go through this all the time. Superstars come and go, you know what I mean? And if LeBron does leave, they want to be out of, of a superstars for a long time, then they never stay out, you know. Exactly, and, and I think what what they have is is the connection with Clutch, and mm-hmm. I think that's 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 the biggest thing that they have is that they will be in contention for players. If you remember, there was a few years there where um, you know, you know, Kobe was towards the end of his career. They couldn't get, get anybody. I mean, people forget that. You know, like they wanted like Lamarcus Aldridge and other guys like that, and Carmelo, and nobody wanted to come. And so, I think now at least with their connection with Clutch. And Le- listen, LeBron is going to be in Los Angeles long term. Maybe he plays his last year with his son, um, but that that's it. This is sort of sort of like one year, and then I think he retires in Los Angeles. I wouldn't be shocked if. Well, here's the thing: LeBron does want to be a part of the the ownership group in Las Vegas, but um, you know, you, you definitely want that attachment to Clutch because it's been a pipeline for great talent. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely, man. And I feel like a team in like there's gonna be a team in Vegas in the near future, as long with Seattle too. Like, yeah, it's gonna the NBA is gonna be expanded, and I'm excited for it. And uh, you know what I mean? I gotta ask this man: give us a Kobe Bryant story that nobody knows about, if you if you can. Well, you know, I mean, I think everyone knows how how hard he works, and you know, my favorite uh, story is uh, we're in Orlando, 2009, and they're in a position to clinch the title in game five and before game five we're at the team hotel and it's like midnight and like Kobe's at the bar and I'm there as well and he's drinking Coronas and and I'm like shoot like you guys got like a game tomorrow but <laughs> and then I um and then I go back to my room and I can't sleep so I come back down to the lobby to get something to drink and Kobe's in a full sweat like it's like I don't know what it was like three four o'clock in the morning and I'm like bro did you sleep he's like no I got plenty of time to sleep once we win the championship. And so, you know, you've heard about all the hard work he puts into it, but it was really true. I mean, truly, truly, truly first guy in the gym, the last one to leave. And so like, I always go back to that one. Like that was my favorite championship. I mean, 2010 was obviously a lot of fun game seven against the Celtics was something about winning that first one without Shaq for Kobe was really important for him. I mean, that championship in particular, that meant a lot to him. Yeah, most definitely, man. That championship in 20, 2009, man, when we beat Dwight Howard in the Alonzo Magic. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was a that was a good series. You know, Kobe Kobe came out there and took the series over from game one. He done, he set the tone early. You know what I mean? That's what that's why Kobe Bryant's the greatest, man. He sets the tone early. He just dominates. He just doesn't take any plays off. He'll play through growing p- broken fingers sprained ankles and you know i actually have a kobe bryant story too um he actually followed me on twitter one time and we had a conversation and stuff so you know that. yeah that's good and he we talked and he said keep up the great work on your podcast and keep striving for greatness so that kind of is really good for me you know so i keep pushing on this journey and uh tell us a little bit about your uh 
sports uh, website, the sports yeah, website, so Sports Tribune. The Sporting Tribune really covers sports in uh, Southern California, Las Vegas, Hawaii. I, I, I pick those markets because if you look at the regional sports network footprint, uh, those are the those are the places that they serve. So, you know, when you're in Southern California, when you're in Las Vegas, when you're in Hawaii, and you turn on your television, you're gonna see the Lakers, you're gonna see the, the Dodgers, you're gonna see these teams. And so, I was thinking of the, maybe there's a way to like, connect them. Uh, obviously, we you know the connection of Los Angeles and Vegas. It's a very you know short flight. It's so short. There's not even time to serve you like a drink anymore. It's a 35 minute flight. It's a three and a half hour drive. And so, um, you know, so we uh, got uh, we got together with some folks. We hire some journalists in each market. So it's been fun. Uh, we're we're going to be one year in September. The growth has been amazing. I, you know, I mean, the, the hardest thing for me to do is to be patient. You know, these things take time. But uh, the support's been great, and we're having a blast. Yeah, man, I see it. I see you putting in our work, man. I'm proud of you, man. Keep it up. And uh, one more final question before I get up out of here, before we get up out of, out of here. What is your favorite sports memory of all time that you experienced as a journalist and then as a sports broadcaster? Oh, man, that's a great question, you know, because I mean, that it's still surreal for me as a sports fan in Los Angeles uh, to be in the position I'm at. But I think I told it to you, you know, 2009, uh, it, it, it was really my first time being at the team hotel. Okay. And it was really by chance. I mean, normally, like as a reporter, like I'm not at the team hotel, I'm somewhere else. Uh, but just out of luck or whatever, they, they booked me at the team hotel. So I really got uh, that, uh, that finals in Orlando. And back then, as you remember, it was two, three, two. So I was really with them for a week there. You know, breakfast with Phil Jackson and the staff and getting this no Kobe and it just um that was my favorite. And then I, I, at night when they won the championship and I have this picture of you know Kobe doesn't take his jersey off. So that that's how much the the, the the title meant to him. Like he still had his jersey on post game, and so they had a party back at the team hotel that that I got to go to. It was just such a thrill. Yeah, man, and that's good. I'm glad you experienced that, man, because I'm trying to get to where you're at. You know what I mean? And what kind of advice would you have for me to get to, to your level? You know, do exactly what you're doing. I mean, I have a lot of respect for you, the grind that you put in. You don't take no for an answer. Uh, you know, you know, you you um, you are you, you, you could tell that, that that this means a lot to you. And I, and I think that shines through like over time where you're you just got to be consistent, you know, and, and so, uh, you know, people will tell, you no know, or people won't um, come through at times. But as long as you grind, as long as you're consistent, as long as you show up good thing will happen to you yeah most definitely man i appreciate that and arash makarzi thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule thank you for coming on big baby sports thanks brother i'll talk to you soon all right later thank you arash makarzi for coming up on big baby sports man that was a good show today hit the like button subscribe to the channel turn on the post notification for each and every podcast man um have a great one laker nation peace